This is Don Doria, editor at Sam Hain Horror. You're listening to the Tim O and Harley Show. Welcome to the Tim O and Harley Show. Thank you for listening to the Tim O and Harley Show. I am Tim O. Over there is my pot on mind crime, Mr. Ben Harley. Say hello, Harley. What is happening, people? Ben Hula Hoop Harley. How the hell are you? Hey, hey, good, Tim O. How are you, my friend? <laughs> That's not too bad. <laughs> uh, everybody, Ben Harley has a brand new, uh, I think you you have a telemarketing headset now, don't you? Yeah, um, I want to... Make sure I got a little survey for you guys to take, if you wouldn't mind today, Tim. All right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, I do, Tim. I got a nice little headset here. I feel like, uh, yeah, I should ask you some questions and see if you want to sign up for something. <laughs> uh, well, I don't, but uh, we can. Uh, okay. You can keep asking me questions for about the next yeah. hour or so. I mean, we should be <laughs> sure. Okay. We should be fine. So, uh, how many people live in your household? <laughs> <laughs> You're taking a census. <laughs> yeah. the, that's like your new wrestling character, the Mad Census yeah. Taker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Beating down your doors and yep. taking numbers. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you can't duck the census. That's that's right. Uh, another thing we can't duck, Mr. Ben Harley. It is Christmas yes. uh, shopping season. Oh Christmas yeah, Christmas season is sure. upon us. We have yeah. made it through. Uh, made it through Thanksgiving. Did play the Fragile Porce. My show was fun. Uh, yeah, a few less people there than last year. We kind of thought that. We kind of it, it had that kind of feel to it. Uh, but okay. it was still fun. Still fun. Not yeah. too bad. I mean, there were still hundreds of people there. So, you know, I'm not, well, I'm not complaining. <laughs> no. <you know>? Uh-uh. <laughs> so I hope everybody came out and had a good time. We certainly did. And uh, talk about maybe doing some new stuff. Fragile Pores oh, really? okay. I didn't think we were going to do that. But I think we were like, you know what? Yeah. Sometimes when you play a gig in front of people, you realize these people deserve something new. And yeah. uh, we deserve to work <laughs> a little really bit. Go. We need to maybe do <laughs> yeah. something like you know creative. And plus, we have Sir Ian Baird in the mix now, and it's always nice to have oh, something that, yeah. written, you know, with uh, him in it. Yeah, yeah when you got sure. some. So we might. Yeah, I don't know. We kind of tossing that around. Don't hold me to that. Okay. Don't hold me I, to it. But I might toss some things. We got uh, <laughs> Dermal Ridge is on is on uh, light speed right now. We're getting cabinets yeah. put in. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's upon the horizon, Tim. That's right. So, <laughs> yeah. Again, uh, Squatchy or you know Squatchy Acres, Dermal Ridge, whatever, looking good. But you know the Oasis here is for sale. You can buy your own yeah. Oasis if you live in the St. Louis area. Yeah, and it is an Oasis. That's Absolutely. For sure. Yes, yeah. we have not had one riot at the Oasis yet. Not one. No. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, so we got that. So anybody looking, uh, message Timo and Harley show page, and we'll get you to a, a really nifty real estate agent with a really <laughs> swank place we can get here. Um, got that. Ben Harley uh, yes. got, got a new uh, cri- uh, early Christmas present from Angio and myself to ourselves. Got a 75-inch television. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. You watch that from space. I probably can't. Yeah, my eyesight's <laughs> yeah. getting bad. So pretty nice. Not too bad. Got to dial it in. You know what's funny is bit, I've yeah. noticed a lot of people who buy TVs. I mean, since we have since the flat panels and all that. Yeah. The TVs come with the default settings in the absolute worst place you can put them. Yeah. Yeah. Absolute. <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, Hollywood directors have been lobbying the television manufacturers to stop defaulting some of these uh, silly uh, what do you call, uh, features? I guess you call them. Really? Like especially the true motion stuff that makes the picture look like it's floating through liquid. Oh wow! No, you know what I'm talking seen about? That. Oh, well, you no, might have. You no. might not have noticed it. It makes it really? look like okay. unnatural. Almost they call it the soap opera effect, where oh, it makes okay. the picture look like it's a soap opera, not the frames per second you know what i mean so it's okay. noticeable even angio notices it and stuff so it's pretty bad but uh yeah yeah so it's a big big television and got some got some work to do on it got to do a little uh eq into the picture for a little bit and get used to it. yeah okay mm-hmm. it's hard coming no. hard coming from panasonic plasma I'd say, I'd, 
Yeah, oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. Yeah. Well, I'd like to say I'd like to come see it, but I'm sure I could see it here from Toledo. So. You probably can't. I'll put it up on our roof and then just get some <laughs> yeah. field glasses out. You'll be fine. You'll see him, okay. You'll see him from there. <laughs> right. uh, but uh, yeah, so doing that. And then again, like I said, that's awesome. Nothing. Little yeah. funny, little funny story, at Ben Harley. Um, now you know that I rock pretty hard. We, you were even tell, yeah. telling me about the Tony Iommi, a little bit of Tony Iommi in me and stuff like yeah. that. So I do the Fragile Pores of My Show, and uh, I'm going to go through what I watched here, which is not much because although I did get Hermity yeah. after the show, yeah. I did get Hermity and nursed some stiffness. Uh, <laughs> I still just got busy and had a lot of stuff to do uh, for moving, and which is happening very soon. Yeah. And all this, but while I was playing the gig, all right, okay, things started going a little wonky. If you're listening here and you're in the audience, you didn't know this was going on, but if you heard it going, you know, Fred is a good band, but something's a little off right now. It started off pretty good. Well, <laughs> we're playing, and I'm like, something happened to my sound. Something okay. happened. Now I had two stacks on stage. Okay, yeah. So when something you That's know nice. when something happens to your sound, you know, it's, it's yeah, oh, yeah, and. I looked back at Sir Ian Baird, and he starts giving me the cutthroat sign, like cut, stop, or I can't, something like that. But what he meant is he couldn't hear me. Okay. Now, Dave Winkler, a bass player in mid-song, he stopped, and he looked at me like I did something wrong. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah. So remember, I had two oh, no. stacks, all right? <laughs> yeah. One stack yeah. was running to the monitors on stage. Okay. Now, okay. Yeah. I'm going to give you some credit, Ben Harley, because you've been around bands a lot. You know what a 412 uh, cabinet you. is, right? Yes, sir. All yeah. right, the guitar cabinet that has four speakers. It's a big box. That's where usually when you go see a concert, and for all the other people out there, that's where the sound's coming out for the guitars. Now, right. While we were playing, apparently I turned around when I couldn't, when I, something seemed weird, and my high watt, my one stack, looked like it was turned off. So Ben Harley, my first reaction is, Oh my God, I forgot to turn my amp on. <laughs> I'm up at this biggest show of the year and I got this big rig and I didn't turn the. Well, I walked up and I'm like, no, no, the on switches oh, yeah. to the on position, but the lights aren't on. That's not good. That's no. never good. Mm. So I'm no. like, I'm like kind of tapping on it. I look behind the rig because that's where all the cabling is. I look behind yeah. the rig. Ben Harley, apparently I rocked so hard, I blew yep. the back of the 412 cabinet plate off. Wow. All right. Jeez. The back. The big yeah. back where you plug in you, the head to the cabinet was lying on the ground with cables yeah. suspending the back of it coming to I. <laughs> So while you, we're playing, you were rocking. It. <laughs> I, I swear to God, the first thing I thought, not oh my God, I'm in front of a lot of people. Yeah. Not not how, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm I'm on stage. The first thing I thought of, I have never seen that happen before. Yeah, and I looked up at Sir Ian Baird, and he looked down at me, and I'm pointing at it. I wanted him to get out from behind his drums to come look. Yeah. Now we're on stage in the middle of the set. I'm going, yeah. Ian, look at this. And then I walk over to Dave Wiggler. I go, the back of my cabinet fell apart. He's like, what? I go, come look at this. He's like, I can't come look. What are you doing? And I swear to you, like the rest of the night when people were talking, I was like, go up and look at my amp. Yeah, I blew up and my amp. I, I've never <laughs> seen the back of a 412, <laughs> which is screwed in. Yeah. Come off. I oh just it just blew off. So luckily I did have two stacks, so I made it through the show with one. So that's fine. Okay. I mean it would, yeah. it would, it would yeah. be fine. But uh, and I even I remember I was telling Dave and Scott, <laughs> I said I said our buddy Sir Ian can really go to bat for me on this. I like to think I rock, but I do not rock hard enough to blow a four twelve <laughs> off the back of a cabinet. And no one in the building that night, not the old sound dude, not the our light guy that he is our light engineer is KC yeah. and the Sunshine Band's light engineer. <laughs> he had never seen this and he's seen some crazy shit on stage. He's seen some rocking. Yeah. There's only like ah. 19 people on stage when they play. I'd love yeah. you to run lights for that, Ben Harley. Oh, geez, yeah. That's like a 53 <laughs> color t shirt to print at one time. It'd yeah. Be, it'd be an octopus. <laughs> But mm. yeah, that's awesome though, Timo. Yeah, so that was that was funny. You're so, giving 110 percent, that's for sure. I guess so. I've never seen it happen. I didn't even fix it. I just kind of <laughs> I just kind of patted it all back together and put it on storage. <laughs> I'll deal with this later. You know, I was like, yeah, I don't know exactly. what's going on. 
Oh boy, but that's um, awesome. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let's see. Oh, and also Ben Harley, we uh, we got discussed on the major radio station here. Yeah, Saint that's what Louis. I heard. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, the DJ uh, is not a horror movie guy. Not a horror okay. movie guy. So he's asking me questions, and I looked at him and I said. You had, he goes, oh, my wife. He said his wife is a huge horror movie fan. And apparently she's, yeah. she went to our Facebook page and signed up right away after the interview. Now. Oh, okay. He said, oh, my God. Yeah, I told my wife last time about this. And I was trying to explain it to her. And I go, did you happen to tell her the guy from Evil Dead 2 was in the studio with you? He was like, oh, no, who's that? Yeah, that was Danny. That was the guy that came with us a year or two ago. <laughs> To this actual interview that we do every year, he didn't right remember. He didn't know what. I don't think he knew what Evil Dead Two was. He was like, I don't know. I'm just a music guy. I have no idea. So that's kind of yeah. funny. But we were uh, promoted big time there. On that the way, road. Timo. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I didn't start yeah. it. The DJ did. No. He started asking me yeah. about it. Yeah. That's me about Ultraman. Tell him. Yeah. Would you tell him? Tell him some good stuff. Oh us? yeah. I said, let's not talk about this fragile pores and my stuff. That's boring yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, but, uh, well, when I got <laughs> Back, like I said, Ben Hurley, I like like to be hermity, but I, I had a lot of stuff going on, so I didn't get yeah. I did get hermity, but I just was busy, so I didn't watch a whole right. lot of uh, things. At least not stuff that I can discuss. N not that I couldn't, okay. but it was nothing worth talking about on a horror podcast. Um, not that everything I'm going to talk about is, but still, <laughs> um, I watched a uh, watched a version from 1948 of The Monkey's Paw. Really? Okay. Yeah, British, How was that? British. Um. Pretty oh, good boy. final <laughs> ten minutes. Yeah, uh, but a lot this, of talking up until yeah. Then. That's I actually wrote down too much blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what I wrote down. Thank uh, you. Yeah, I'm not the only one. <laughs> right. Well, I think the original Monkey's Paw is like a three or four person uh, story. It's not a whole lot. It's just about a monkey's paw and and an older couple with a son, and I think things happen, and they keep wishing for things, and worse things turn around when they get their wishes. <laughs> This okay. had like a lot of characters in it and really had a yeah. lot of static before the last 10 minutes, which is always the best part of the end of the monkey's paw. Of course is why it's a classic. Um, yeah. So the yeah. final 10 minutes was pretty creepy. It was, it wasn't too bad, but the rest of it was, I didn't really pay attention to. You didn't need to. Okay. Blah, right. blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I didn't even see the, the first two wishes get, Get uh, uh, granted. I didn't even notice. Really? It. Yeah, that's how that's how kind of like <laughs> bland and boring it was. Um, uh, so it was, uh, yeah, you know, it's always it on Amazon Prime. I just figured I watched. It was only an hour long, so I thought, well, you know, it seemed like it was about fifty minutes too long when I was watching. It, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another another on Amazon Prime. Ben Harley is. I sure. tried to grab you by your hair and pull you. Over I know. To it. I I even I even sent out some feelers the other day on switch about switching. So yeah. Well, <laughs> we're working on it. <laughs> watched a movie from nineteen ninety called Jekyll and Hyde. Okay. Starring Michael Caine. As okay. Jekyll and Hyde. It was a television nice. film, television film from 1990 with uh, Michael Caine and Cheryl Ladd Ooh, and uh, right. Joss Ackland and David Schofield, otherwise known as the dart player guy from American Werewolf in London. Really? Okay. Oh, I yeah. never miss, you know, I that, that guy. Yeah. Board. I've never missed that board. Right? Yeah. <laughs> he played kind of a snaky uh, reporter guy. Okay. Yeah, he was right. one of those guys. Uh, let's see here. Finally, this is it. Yeah. That's all I got. Finally. That's all you got? Okay. From 1986, Ben Harley. Yes. Starring the one, the only, Burnt Reynolds. <laughs> Ooh, all right. I watched Heat. <laughs> oh, you did? From 1986, nice. okay. Heat. Also starring Howard Hessman. Johnny oh. Fever. Johnny uh, Fever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Peter McNichol from Ghostbusters 2. The okay. funny guy that ran the... Then free in the gallery or whatever. He's oh, also yeah. in the Bean yeah. movie where he takes in Bean, him and his family. <laughs> whatever. I yeah. like Peter McNichol. Uh, this is yeah, like a good. Vegas, Las Vegas gambling slash crime action okay. kind of movie. I got to admit to you, I had a ball watching this movie. Yeah, you know, it's been a long time since I've seen that. Man, what um, a fun movie. It's... Kind of a like a gangster crime movie, and then it goes to like a literally a gambling movie. Yeah, you know, because apparently, I guess, I guess Burt Reynolds has a gambling problem in the movie that they don't really bring up to like halfway through the movie. <laughs> I just yeah. throw it in there or whatever. But yeah. it's got drama, suspense, comedy, and a lot of stupid fighting in it too. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's this one. Okay. I'm going to try to set this up as best as I can. All right. <laughs> all right. Okay. This is a good example of what I was enjoying about, about this film here. Uh, Burt Reynolds is wrestling around with a goon. Okay. Yeah. So this is what he does. He's fighting, and above him, and I even noticed this, Ben Harley, because you know I don't watch the normal things in a film. <laughs> above them, while they were fighting, there was one of those Friday the 13th lights, the bowl <laughs> lights above them, you yeah. know? Yeah. So, Burt Reynolds, okay? <laughs> the Burt Reynolds. The Burt Reynolds throws, throws gasoline on this goon he's wrestling around <laughs> with. Yeah. From off frame, comes flying through. Like, not unlike Bruce Lee or something, <laughs> high kicks the dock light above his, about three feet above the goon's head. Yeah. Causing the sparks to fall on the goon and setting the goon on fire. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you saw basically is him fighting a dude. They're under a light. Out of nowhere, he finds gasoline, throws it on him, and then off frame here, wah! And he comes <laughs> flying through and spang, boom, fire. <laughs> This oh my goodness, pleased yeah. me. This is what I needed to see in my hermity time alone. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my god. It was as soon as I saw that, I said, "This is one of the greatest films ever made." <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. It was fun. It was good. I yeah. I, I probably enjoyed it. Like it. I enjoyed it more than most. Fil- I mean, a lot of films I've seen lately. Actually, okay. had a good time watching it. So, um, but the story was a little odd and different with all the gambling and stuff. I kind of was, yeah, a little thrown off by it. But uh, it was fun though, and I knew you. Yeah, I knew I knew you'd be proud of me and appreciate the fact that I yes. watched a 1986 Burnt Reynolds movie. <laughs> yes, Eat. I am. Yeah. Yeah. Eat, yeah, yeah. So, but that's what I got, Ben uh, Harley. What do you got? That's all you got? Mm-hmm. Oh, I got lots of stuff, Timo. But we yeah. might have to break it up. Yeah, I'll start a couple things here. But you know, the other day I. Uh, was able to watch uh, quite a few movies in one day, which was nice. Kind of like a little marathon. Nice. Got, got to watch two of the movies that we are reviewing today. Good. And then also I watched a little one that I know you like a lot, Timo. And I like as well. I don't think I like it as much as Timo Saban does. Uh-huh. But I will have to say it grew on me a little bit this time. Oh. A couple things. And that's the movie Silver Bullet. Ah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I've been taping a lot of stuff lately. So <laughs> anything mm-hmm. that I remotely like or something I'm interested in, I've been taping. So right. I do like um I do like Silver Bullet. But for some reason this time I, I really did enjoy it. Now I always kinda liked Gary Abusey in the movie. Yeah. But this time, eh, you know, I don't know. Eh, mm-hmm. maybe it was just the my mood that day or something. I don't know. But yeah. uh yeah. What a good movie. And you know what? I will actually have to say that the werewolf only bothered me once or twice, I think. It's got <laughs> a big head. It's usually, yeah. <laughs> it's got well, it's got a teddy bear type head. It does. Kind You're of right. Yeah. So, but there's a few uh, scenes that it looks really good, mm-hmm. and it still has one of my favorite lines I think of any movie of all time, and that's the part when the lady turns around, they're going through the fog, and she says, "Bob, are you going to make lemonade in your pants?" <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know that's childish, but man, I like that. <laughs> yeah, yep. I had to rewind that a couple times. So I, like, yes, I still uh, like the Peacemaker. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's a good scene. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? That whole scene's good, and I think um, maybe I'm going out on a limb here, but it's I. It moved way up on my list of Stephen King films uh, mm-hmm. for some reason the other day. You know, because we've been watching a few of them lately. You know, I know, and they've been on quite a bit. Other ones, you know, right. and I watched Misery the, uh, not too long ago. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it moved up a little bit, yeah. you know. I think it's a good, uh, it's a good movie. I, I really, like the really atmosphere. Like it. it feels yes. like, uh, it's always, since day one when I saw it, it always felt like To Kill a Mockingbird to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know there's no werewolves in To Kill a Mockingbird, but the narration, <laughs> <Is it? laughs> the narration of an old summer gone by, you know, and everything, yeah. and the little boy and girl, I, I don't know. I just always remind me of it. Yeah, I I think it's a good movie. It does have a good feel to it. I like the whole um, storyline. I was watching it uh, with Billy was here that day, and he'd never seen it, which I was surprised. Mm-hmm. And then, but he actually even I think he even liked it. And mm-hmm. then you know the whole surprise of the preacher being the 
Right. You know, the priest being the, um, the yeah, werewolf. Yeah, Everett McGill. Yeah. 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 What a creep, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> guy's awesome. He's a great actor. Yeah. 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 Um, we'll run through a couple things that I watched. Uh, Wendy and I, I've been trying to show her a few movies. Like I said, I've been taping some of these lately. Just things I'm sure she has never seen that are were kind of bigger films when they came out yeah. and kind of thrillers more than horror films. Mm-hmm. So, um, we took a look at the remake of Cape Fear the other okay. day. Yep. Um, I I like that movie. I don't think I liked it as much. <laughs> I don't know if it maybe it's, I didn't think it held up, but it does. I guess you know it's, it's some of it's a little odd. I think De Niro's a little bit odd sometimes. In yeah. it maybe this time I watched it, but uh, it's a bit long winded. Yeah. Yeah. A little long-winded. Yeah. 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 It's really good, But, though. you know, yeah. I remember when I saw it, and, you know, I saw that in the theater, and I liked it a lot, you know, and it made me go back and watch the original, which I think the original one's really good, too. Mm-hmm. Hell, yeah. I, you know, I, I really liked the original a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like the fact that both Gregory Peck and Robert Mitchum were in this, too, mm-hmm. briefly, yeah. you yep, know? That's pretty and, cool. And different sides of the, you know, y- yeah. law, I guess, too, or whatever. So, right. yeah, it was kind of neat. Um Let's see. Uh, we also watched uh, Silence of the Lambs, too. Really? Okay. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen Silence of the Lambs in a long time, either. Mm-hmm. Uh, another one that I remember seeing in the theater, me which kind of just... blew me away a little bit. I wasn't expecting <laughs> uh-huh. that movie. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, I, I think it still kind of holds up. Um, I'm not sure how much Wendy liked either one. She, I think she kind of did, mm-hmm. you know, but I think maybe they showed their age a little. I don't know. Uh-huh. But I think I Silence think, of the Lambs to me is a better, uh, it's a little more timeless. I don't yeah. think it, yeah. I don't, oh, yeah. yeah, I don't think it's, a, I think that the, if I remember correctly, Cape Fear had a little hipness to how it was shot. And yeah. stuff like that. And and it's a, little, a Scorsese film. Yes. And I like him, but I, I, <laughs> I think that uh, I, I just really think that Science of the Lambs is a good suspense drama. Oh yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's kind of why you know I I picked it. I thought that's more like you know, but I think some of it might have been a little odd, <laughs> uh, uh-huh. <laughs> which it is. It's supposed to be. That's sure. what they're going for. You know. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So not bad to go back and revisit those. Uh, you know, I like I like both of them. It's mm-hmm. nice. You know. Good. Um. Okay. Real fast, Timo couple new things and then I'll cut it short for this week. Um, one new thing that uh, something I've been wanting to see here recently uh, came out on the free uh, Showtime uh-huh. and that's a movie called Tarzan. It's, I don't know if you've ever heard of Tarzan before. Tim. It's a <laughs> oh, little no. story about a man who was raised by apes. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe have you heard this? Before? Oh, wait a minute. Is that the guy is trying to take my costume, the little loincloth <laughs> thing, swinging around my yeah. muscles sticking out? Yeah. Oh, that, that jackass. Oh, <laughs> man. What a wannabe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Wussy, too. Yeah. 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 No, wait. Did uh, you see the, the, the new, new one that came yes. out? The yeah. Grey Stoke, or was, did it have another? Uh, it's, I think it's Legend of Tarzan. Maybe, okay. Or this one. Yeah, how was um, that? I'm not bad. It's not too bad. Um, it's basically Tarzan has already been back. He is Grey Stoke. He's been back in society for some time. Okay. And then uh, they end up going back to the, you know, to Africa or Congo or whatever because uh-huh. um, a whole bunch of it's, it's after like a lot of people had is colonialized or tried to, you mm-hmm. know, Africa and then they would split it up. Like 1880s or something, you know, mm-hmm. split it up into, you know, different spots. And they were, and I'm trying to think of the country. Anyways, the country, the other guys are really trying, they're trying to find diamonds and stuff like that. Right. So it revolves around uh, Tarzan going back and defending, you know, people and fighting the guy who he killed his son at one point for killing. Uh, oh, boy. That Tarzan's sounds complicated. Gorilla mother. Yeah, <laughs> it's not too bad. It's not actually bad. not too bad. No, okay. I might have made it a little bit more yeah. confusing than it needed to be. <laughs> but yes, it's not too bad. The story is okay. Uh, the the main bad guy is kind of a smarmy enough guy that you, you know, mm-hmm. you enjoy his, his He's just a jackass, right? You know, right? So it's it's good, you know. The you know, uh, I like the fact it's got Margot Robbie in it. I kind of like her. I'm a little sweet on her. Really? Lately. Okay. Yeah. She's cute, you know. She's cute in it. She's not bad actress either, uh-huh. you know. So, um, the guy who plays Tarzan, not bad, not bad. That's good. Samuel, 
No, no, hell no, right. no, uh, nobody. Come on, no, come on, no. sir. Come on. Yeah, right. <laughs> of course, it has every. You know, uh, this film comes with, as every film just about does anymore. It comes with one Samuel L. Jackson. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> He's you know, a today's just, John Carradine. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. So. Um, he's not bad in it, you know, he's okay. It's uh, just basically, he plays like an American that comes trying to convince, uh, Tarzan to go do this too, you know, and stuff. So, I don't know. It's right. not bad, Timo. Uh, give it an eh. It's okay. And it's not super long either, which I uh, okay, also that's appreciated. Good. Yeah. A lot of um, you know, are, yeah. Yeah. No, this one's not by any means. Okay. So I've actually been, uh, believe it or not, and I haven't even mentioned this to you, but I have been collecting. Over the last month or so, uh, the old Tarzan films on DVD. I mean, oh, nice. Yeah, like yeah, the old Johnny Weissmiller ones. ones and stuff. Um, I can't say I've been watching them, but there was a couple of documentaries on, on uh, Amazon Prime, once again, uh, about yeah, Tarzan right. and, the, leg- <laughs> and the, the history of the Tarzan films. Yeah, it was actually pretty oh, interesting. Okay. That's just pretty yeah. interesting, you know, watch. So I was like, there's a lot of them. A lot yeah. of Tarzan movies. This is, yeah. I mean, for every Western that came out, I think a Tarzan movie came out back then. <laughs> you might yeah. be right. On this. <laughs> so. I remember seeing quite a few of them when I was a youth, mm-hmm. you know. But um, so you know, I've I've always been somewhat in it. I mean, I wasn't the biggest Tarzan fan, but I've right. always enjoyed Tarzan for the most part. And this is not bad, you know. Uh, you have to suspend some disbelief sometime, you know, oh, yeah. or have some suspension of disbelief, whatever. And we're like. They're they're swinging from trees, you know, and they're trying to catch up to a train. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's a vine that's I don't know that's three hundred feet long that you're <laughs> swinging, and and how did that vine that's three hundred feet or three thousand feet down the track get all the way on this tree that you just grabbed? I don't know. I guess, I, you know. He trusts his vines. I yeah, I, that that's a little. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, it's a little suspect. I'm I'm calling foul. I'm still that, nervous. So. A guy doesn't wear shoes in the jungle, so I don't even want to start That's the vines true, yet. That's true. Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, if it, it, but if that's the worst thing about it, I you know, I can't yeah, it, you know. So there are some good things. Definitely some redeeming things about it. The graphics aren't too bad. You know, mm. they're not too bad. You know what I mean. So that's not too bothersome either. So right. All right, one thing, Timo, last but not least, something I went and saw, also Wendy and I went and saw on Sunday okay. um, the other day, so I guess through the holiday weekend, went and saw a little movie they just made called The Justice League, uh-huh. went to the actual theater to see this. Yes, yes. Um, hmm. You're part of the conspiracy. <laughs> you went to the Marvel side. You were saying well, people were poo pooing it just because it was DC, and it yeah, was a, yeah. it was a, it, it was all a thing a charade set up by Marvel. Now you're working for yeah. Marvel. Is that what it is? Well, I think I might be. I don't, I don't know <laughs> if I'm necessarily working for Marvel. It just, eh, for me, it's just it was just kind of like one of the Marvel films, I guess. Eh, I think, I think someone must have got hurt feelings over the last movie that he did, and decided to make it a little bit more. A little brighter, I guess. Uh-huh. And I, I guess I can't say it's as bright as that new Thor Ragnarok, which oh, kind of okay. looks like an looks like the ice capades. But <laughs> I don't, I don't, um, I don't know. It's it's okay. It's not bad. There's some some good things. I guess I'm gonna leave my final judgment out till I see it a, a second time. But uh-huh. uh, it's it's okay. But I just kept thinking to myself. You spent three hundred million dollars on that, you know? Like, oh my god! <laughs> yeah, like I just—it's—it's it's good, but it's just a typical superhero film for me. I right. mean, which is okay, I guess. Um, but I—I I like the darker tone stuff. I like the, you know, um, and it's got some of that, but it's a little bit lighthearted. The guy who plays a Flash is really good in it. At first, he's a—I don't know—he's kind of like, yeah. But once you warm up to him, he's pretty good in it. Um, the guy who played Aquaman says, eh, it's not too bad. Uh-huh. Uh, the girl, the Wonder Woman, I, you know, I'm starting, she's starting to grow on me. She's, she's a good character. How's her she, outfit? Oh, they, they take a lot of liberties and I'm not, gonna, <laughs> I'm, you know, I don't want to call anybody out or anything. Uh-huh. I, you know, the cameraman's, I don't know. <laughs> there was some kind of <laughs> dust up. Me. There was some kind of dust up because their, their suits were a little skimpier. 
And I'm yeah. like, and, and they were always always focused on the women. I'm like, um, I'm pretty sure Aquaman's well, yeah. outfit's kind of skimpy too. I think yeah. everybody's bodies are being exploited in these movies. Grow up, Stop. get over it, and just don't go see the stupid. Yeah. It's a comic book movie for the love of that's all that's holy. Exactly, you know? exactly. Jeez, and that's God. what this is. You know, uh-huh. it is. You know, I my issue with it, and I'm always going to have that is they really Batman kind of takes like a back seat to uh, in this, which I, you know, hey, there's been enough Batman films or things. I'm sure mm-hmm. <laughs> it's time that. But as far as that goes, you know, he's usually always been somewhat, not, he's not the leader by any means, mm-hmm. but kind of almost like a little bit, you know. Um, but um, yeah, I just kind of, I don't know. There's not enough Batman in it for me, that's for sure. <laughs> he's in it, but it's right. just, I don't know. It's it's okay. Uh, Superman's pretty good in it, you know. Um, now, is that the same guy that played Superman last? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I like him. He's good. Okay. He's good. Mm-hmm. Um, it, but yeah, it's not a bad film overall. I was just expecting a little bit more. I went in with some higher expectations. Mm-hmm. I think the Batman Superman films twice the movie though that this is. I just do. I mean, I, I, but then again, I'm a homer to that because it's based on one of my favorite comic books. Right. Um, Have you seen I Wonder still Woman? Just think, no, not yet. I've heard good things about uh, you it. You know, like I've it. seen pieces of it. Like it was playing at the Foo Bar the yeah. day that we had the John Dugan thing this past summer, and. It you know it looks like an okay movie, but it just doesn't. I don't know. It just doesn't. There, the thing I liked about Wonder Woman was the campiness. Yeah, and they keep trying to take campiness out and make the shit serious. Hence, people complaining about like me. the over exploitation <laughs> of the of the women's oh, bodies no. when they're just not even paying attention to the fact there's six packs on the yeah. other side of dudes too. It's the same thing. I don't. I don't. Under, it's we all love the human body. That's how we reproduce, you morons. <laughs> you know? Of course, yeah. sex sells. It's been selling since the dawn of time. I mean, but the thing is, it's like I, I think it's like the reason people are starting to complain is because yeah, you're taking the shit too serious. Oh yeah, I mean, if, you're, if like, you're talking like about that stuff, it's yeah. I mean, well, I understand the Batman versus because all, there's a lot of Amazons in. <laughs> Well, that's what they were bitching about that. The Amazons, like, I guess in the Wonder Woman (laughs) movie, they had like big breastplates on and stuff like that because it was directed by a woman and she didn't. Who cares if it was directed by a guy or a woman? It doesn't matter to me at all. Pet Cemetery is an amazing movie and that was directed by a woman. I mean, what the hell? It's no big deal. They actually mentioned Pet Cemetery in the film, Tim O'Brien. Do they really? (laughs) Yeah, I didn't see that one coming. (laughs) No, no. Yeah. But I mean, but, uh, just, yeah, I just I think that sometimes I miss the campiness of like, yeah, the 70s TV shows. Now, I don't want them to be just like that. But I, I, I mean, I don't know. It's hard for me, Ben Harley, because I don't take comic books. I don't yeah. want to take them that serious. I don't, sure. And I don't mean the artwork and stuff like taking something serious or something like that. How dare you? Yeah. No, but I just mean I don't want – I'm sitting there watching it. I'd rather just have fun and giggle and just kind of smile and, oh, that was a good punch, you know, or something. Yeah. I don't – Well, then you'll yeah. – I mean, this is more of an action film mm-hmm. than it is. But, you know, which I'm okay with too, but I get enough of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, like mostly a lot of the new films nowadays and they had – I try not to get too long-winded here, but they had, you know um, – what is it? Uh, they had a couple of different previews. Tomb Raider, there's a new Tomb Raider coming out, the Jumanji. Uh, and then there's this other one coming out. And I don't know if it's Spielberg directing it or if it's just produced by him, but it's kind of like this video game where it's like, <laughs> actually, it's weird. It's supposed to be Columbus, Ohio, like 2045. And I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's supposed to be, if you computer games come to life or what it is, but it just, there's so much going on mm. in these films. I can't take it. It's just too much. I can't, mm-hmm. my, my, my mind can't wrap around right. all the stuff that is being thrown at me at one time. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, right. um, yeah, I understand though. I, I mean, well, we didn't grow up multitasking like kids. No, do today. Uh-uh. I mean, we weren't, my no. minds weren't trained for it like they are too. So that's why I think we're, not getting some of this stuff as yeah. much, you know, which that's fine. It's not, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. you don't, I don't expect, I don't expect people to keep making entertainment movies for just simply us, but they can yeah. give us a few more bones every now and then. And then. Yeah, I'm what still else climbing come- back for there will be blood, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, 
Well, they're coming out with um, the Black Panther too. That that'll mm. be coming out. So they they had that as a preview. So a lot of these there's just almost too many comic book films coming out. But we'll see. I'm not sure if they'll be doing another Justice League after this one or not. If but I don't know, Timo. So um, you'll have to see it. Get back to me when you see it. Yeah, I'll probably watch you know it. What, I'm though? not going back to the theater to see it. No, you know what? I didn't like the Avengers uh, movies very much. So and I haven't that, seen the second one. I saw the first one. I, I really didn't like the second one very much at all. And they, and they they were exactly what I'm talking about. They were goofy, big fight movies, and I didn't like those yeah. either. So I think just think it's a matter of taste. I mean, I loved a couple of those X Men movies. Yeah, you know, the Batman and Superman was pretty good. It was okay, you know. I mean, and it didn't bother me. But yeah, eh, some of this stuff. I mean, look, when they're putting out a comic book movie a month, you're bound to not like a few of them. They're bound well, that's to the thing too. It's, it's, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that's the thing. I, I figured out. You know, I've had a pretty good run. I've had a pretty Jeez, good sure run since the, you know, since that uh, what's the name Nolan took over the Batman right, stuff. Right. Right. You know? So I've had a good run. I've I've seen some films I've really enjoyed and some lifelong films that I will. Always right. So, you know, I can't. You know, what do they say? What meatloaf say? Two out of three ain't bad. That, so I've had a, a little bit. They probably you know. did. So yeah, <laughs> uh, that was probably the the steaks he ordered that he could. Eat. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> let's get to our fishing little films, Mr. Mr. Ben Harley, for this okay. week. Let's do that. So first up, Ben Harley from 1975. Yes. From China, from Hong Kong, <laughs> China. Hong Kong. The 1975 China, China which it, it literally is a much different China than <laughs> it is yes. today. We have the film Black Magic. Black Magic, yes. Black Magic. All right, let me get you a real short synopsis here. Okay. Get yeah. movie guy. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. A magician makes money by charging people to cast love spells on the objects of their affection. Complications arise when he decides that he wants a customer's bride for himself. Yeah. All right. Yeah, pretty much. That was short. Yeah, Yeah. Good. A um, little bit of a pumpkin head setup in a way, where there's a guy who kind of lives out in his own, and yeah, yeah. He, he gives you potions. Um, yeah, potions whipped up with uh, snake venom, <laughs> lady sweat, and breast milk. <laughs> I'll let you just yeah, know what Lady it, Sweat is uh, when you watch the movie. We'll just we'll, and and little some, a little bit of a JJ and Rice too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, hmm. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's see here, Ben. I know this is the first time you see. We did. We have not yes. actually even reviewed hardly any movies from China on this a few, show. But yeah, no. Not, couple, I mean, a lot of yeah. Japanese stuff, but not from yes. China. So uh, yeah. I'm sure it's your first time seeing Black Magic Ben Harley. Yes, so sir. why don't you start up here? <laughs> Late, what you I got? Know, yeah. If you got some breast milk and snake venom and lady sweat for me. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. A yeah. little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one's a little odd, odd, odd bird. You know. Um yeah, like I said, uh once I saw the JJ and Rice scene, I thought, well, we're I'm in for something a little bit different. <laughs> but um yes, this is uh it kind of a uh, story of a little bit of a couple different characters and how it it all leads up to one kind of ending, right. you know, how they're all kind of intertwined a little yes. bit. And um, what's neat about that, I, it, it was good for me because it kind of kept the story going a little yeah. bit. You know, you're not you're you're not getting tired of one character after a while. I guess some of them are a little draining. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, um, it's not a bad movie. I kind of enjoyed it. It's just it's 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 odd enough. <laughs> And with the um, the whole black magic thing's kind of cool too, you know. But right. I, I kind of liked it because yeah, doesn't it, it starts out with like one guy who really uh, he's infatuated with a girl who she's like she's a um, a widow, right? Yeah, the lady's kind of a widow he, of a r- real rich fella. Yeah, it's kind of a I like her, but she likes she him, likes- and he likes me. You know, kind of thing yeah. where it's like a total circle of people. Getting potions to make each other fall yeah. in love with each other, not unlike Popeye and Alice the Goon. Yeah, uh, yeah. you know, I love Popeye <laughs> like that. It, it, a lot like that actually. Yeah. Um, and there's a definitely, you know, definitely enough creepy characters too and stuff in it um, mm-hmm. for me, which I enjoy. The end right, of, but uh, yeah, it's not bad. Um, it's it's a good movie, I think. It's it's yeah. got some decent actors and stuff in it too, and and you kind of feel for a couple of the characters. The one main girl, um, yeah, the widow. She's a 
jackass. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, so she's good and smarmy enough, too, in the film. Because there's actually, like, really two kind of bad, two well, monsters, I guess you call it. Mm-hmm. Be the one main magician guy. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and and then her, really. Right. She's, you know, because she just keeps stirring the pot on stuff. Cause she, what, she falls in love with, like, a contractor or whatever, but he has a girlfriend or a wife, I think. And yeah, yeah. So she, but she will stop at nothing, Timo. That's right. So there's really <laughs> nobody particularly evil, evil in the movie as much as conniving each other. Yeah, and, and the and, magician yeah. guy, he he gets them to do things really, you know, that you wouldn't do out of right. your character, you right? Know, right. So. so he's a little, he's a little yeah. shaky, you know. There, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. he finds out that he might want a little bit of the money, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. He needs a so. little bit of the lady, I think, too. Then yeah, yeah. Do that, but uh, no, this is a Shaw Brothers movie, so that's what bothers me. And when you see, like, I think it was. Um, uh, Kill Bill where they have Shaw scope thing pull up, which just drove me oh, yeah. nuts when I saw that, yeah. you know, and everything. <laughs> um, a couple of funny things. This was 1975. It was China. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, a couple, couple things. I, the couple lines that were kind of funny. Uh, when the magician, when the gal was kind of nagging at the magician and he just looks at her and goes, don't ask questions. Yeah, yeah, I just that's like you can't say that to a woman in a movie anymore. Just don't ask questions. Stop it, yeah. woman. Away from me, woman. Yeah. You know that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. I also, I also really miss something, Ben Harley, and I What's really, that? really miss this. And I don't know if you caught this, but I miss the yes, master. Yeah. I miss I miss yeah. I want the master. I want to be called. Yeah. I want to have a guy calling me master. That's yeah. all. I really miss that because you know, as soon yeah. as somebody get hypnotized, any time between the years of nineteen twenty eight and nineteen uh, seventy four, maybe maybe yeah. five, when someone got hypnotized, was yes, master. master. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I kind of miss that. <laughs> you do uh, miss that. Yeah, I've got these movies. You on, want uh, a Renfield, Timo? You want to rent Renfield. you a Renfield? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I need one bad. Um, yeah. uh, this is actually on Amazon Prime, as is Black Magic Two, the sequel. Okay, um, which I <laughs> right. I kind of remember the sequel. I enjoy it a lot, a little bit more. That's just my, okay. my recollection of it, but we'll see. This movie, when I saw it the first time, it was like, I popped it in. I don't know why I did. I had read about it or heard about it, um, but I just kind of threw it in. I don't think I expected to watch the whole thing. Okay. I just kind of sure. wanted to look at it, heard about it. I'm like, ah, just throw it in. And I ended up, up right at about 20 minutes or so. I think what happened is I got completely ripped. Yeah, I melted into my couch <laughs> one day, couldn't lift my arm to grab the remote in time. And by the time I was able <laughs> was to do that, it kind of sucked me in a little bit. Yeah, you know, yeah. and it's not very often. This basically has Kung Fu theater production values. And yeah, it's not sure. that often that a movie like that. The story. It doesn't have quite enough kung fu in it, though. It doesn't. No, you know what was funny is somebody on IMDb, some meatball moron, and I got I got a bone to pick with IMDb and the person who said this. Okay, yeah, first of all, okay. for the IMDb people to actually allow this review to be posted on IMDb, yeah. okay, somebody actually claimed it wasn't a real Shaw Brothers movie because there wasn't any kung fu in it. I'm like, <laughs> what? Yeah, That's like please. saying it isn't a Steven Spielberg movie because there isn't an alien with a glowing yeah. finger in it. <laughs> that doesn't seen. make any sense whatsoever. It is so a Shaw Brothers movie. They didn't make a Kung Fu movie. They made a movie called Black Magic. Right. Oh, Ben Harley. Yeah. Oh, it drove me nuts. But anyway. Um, <laughs> I'm with you on that. Yeah. So it's, it, it is. It's almost like a Kung Fu movie without the Kung Fu. So they literally, yeah. they rely on the story here. And I, and I'm not trying to be mean, but them old movies from China don't normally. The Japanese ones do, but the Chinese ones usually don't draw me in like this. And this one really drew me in the first time I saw it. It actually made me go watch the second one. Okay, you know, so uh, but uh, it is on Amazon Prime. Ding ding. Mm-hmm. ding 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 ding. Yeah, it actually <laughs> looks really good. It's a good stream, although yeah, it's, oh, it does. Yeah, although it's dubbed. Uh, and yes, I don't know if you yeah. watched it dubbed or subtitled. It doesn't matter. That stuff was usually. I watched it subtitled. Okay. Actually. Okay. Yeah. I saw it dubbed. So um, I might have lost something <laughs> translation there because <laughs> it looks so good on Amazon Prime. Instead of watching my um, subtitled DVD, I watched it on, on that. But uh, yeah. I've seen it before, though. So I want to see something a little different. Um, 
But yeah, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna give this movie a, a solid great bait up. It's an entertaining film, and if you can get past the first 10, 15 minutes, it ought to suck you in. It yeah. ought, it ought <clears> to get <throat> you kind of interested. A little soap opery, but not it's kind of a not testosterone filled soap opera yeah. type of thing. So anyway, I'm gonna give it a good solid great bait up. How about you? Uh yeah, me too, Tim. I, I actually I kind of enjoyed it. It was funny enough a little bit. I should say funny, but it's odd enough. You know, I'm like, okay, here we go. I, I get it. Right. And uh, so that, that drew me in. And like I said, the characters aren't bad. I mean, now this isn't like, <laughs> this isn't like masterpiece theater by any means. <laughs> but, you know, it's still, I, I did enjoy it enough. You know, and the subtitles didn't bother me either. And it did force me to, you know, <laughs> pay a little bit more attention. Right. I kind of wish and I would have Because my hearing's bad anymore, <laughs> Oh yeah, no, mine is too. I wish I would have watched it that way. Now that you mention it, yeah, you know, but it, but still, it was okay. You know, it, and and some of those translation is kind of funny for me too, mm -hmm. um, the way it's is formatted. But yeah, um, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. So yeah, I definitely I'm gonna give it a great paper. Okay, and, uh, I'm looking forward to maybe watching Black Magic too. That's right. It's actually it's got a great scene in a club that freaks me out every time I see it because Beastie Boys sampled one of the songs from it. I mean, of yeah. all things, you can imagine me, Ben Harley, about 10 years ago or so, sitting in my, <laughs> minding my own business, watching Black Magic 2, yeah. and, and seeing this and hearing this and having no one to say anything to. I was by myself, I'm like... <laughs> yeah, you um, want to call someone, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, um... I finally found out where that beat came from. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm sure I wasn't the only one, but still, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> Awesome, ah, man. yes. So uh, well, let's get to our next official little sure, film, Tim. Mr. Ben Harley, before we even yeah. before we even discuss Black Magic. Do. <laughs> yeah. Do. Let's yeah. get to the 1991 film, uh, okay. recently released on Blu-ray by our friends at Synapse. Yeah. Popcorn. Popcorn, I mean, popcorn. yes. Popcorn, yeah. So... Uh, Let's see. Very short one sentence synopsis here again from Mr. Movie Guy. Okay. He's got an easy, got an easy week here. Yeah, he uh, sure has. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Right. Okay. Oh, looks like we might have a blurb. Nice. No, nah, I'm not going to do be. No, no, this okay. it's not a fun one. Oh yeah, oh, it okay. is. Here's one. Buy a bag. Go home in a box. Yeah, there. <laughs> <I'm here. laughs> okay. Uh, There's your poster or blurb from <laughs> there Popcorn. You go. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> A murderer begins killing off teenagers at a horror movie marathon they have organized in an abandoned theater. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, it. Pretty good. Yes, again, from 1991, Popcorn. Now, I want to talk a little bit about this movie because there's things that have been bothering me about this, okay? Okay. Sure. And uh, one of them is that, first of all, it was shot in Kingston, Jamaica. Really? Yeah, that's why there's a, that's why there's a uh, reggae band. <laughs> Movie. Yeah, that's what I was. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, happy when they came out. What was funny is, uh, and this is just a little side note, what was funny is uh, they claimed they were really having a hard time getting extras. <laughs> really? Well, for the and they were kind of dancing around this subject. I watched some of the special yeah. features. They were kind of dancing around the subject. Let's just be straight here. Uh, it's Jamaica. Everybody's black. Yeah, <laughs> and it doesn't work like in a normal town or a city. You want to have white people, black people, Hispanics. You know, you want to have a good. Yeah. and that is true. You do want to have a. a, a I buy that. You, you want to have a good, you know, uh, a mix of people, and so yeah. they, that's why there was a bunch of people that came dressed up in masks and stuff oh, like okay. that. They that's were trying a, yeah. to, yeah, they were I trying know. to even <laughs> out the different uh, the different races mm. of people and stuff for the film, uh, which is actually interesting more than anything. And I'm a I, <laughs> sure. I'm a Jamaica fan, man. I've been there lots of times. I love yeah. me Jamaica, so. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I thought that was kind of cool. The other thing is this. I've had discussions with people about this film over the years, and I'm here to put my foot down and say, okay. quit making me second guess my movie knowledge. Because <laughs> the movie was directed by Mark Harrier, uh, okay. Alan Ormsby, who directed, I do believe he directed uh, Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things and stuff. Uh, he, he started directing it. Okay. Um, and he also did some of the screenplay writing. Basically, this was a lot of the crew that did Porky's and that did A Christmas Story. Okay? Wow. It's that okay. same group yeah. of people. Now, Bob Clark is the director of Christmas Story and was the director of Porky's. And I always had thought, I knew I read this somewhere and learned this, that he basically was the man behind the curtain in this movie. 
that okay. this was basically kind of more of his thing. And I have been told, no, he didn't do that. He was like kind of there in a couple days and kind of helped get no, no, no. no. <laughs> he was there the whole time. As a matter of fact, watching the special features, the director yeah. uh, actually, Mark Harrier, actually said, well, now I know how Toby Hooper felt on Poltergeist. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> Bob Clark was definitely... Now, these guys were all friends, so this wasn't contentious. Bob Clark was literally going, oh, 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 oh you can't do it that way. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Stuff like that. And I do believe he's working on the makeup. Uh, oh, Bob, really? The director, Porky, <laughs> was working on the makeup, and uh, you know, it was just, he was behind the scenes. Now, all the cast, sure, all the cast in these, uh, these, quote, special features here, all said, I don't know what the other cast people would say, but... And Bob Clark kind of directed this, if not co-directed, <laughs> even. And of course, the director said, "No, I directed it." <laughs> so, of course, uh, yeah, yeah kind of like yeah. you see and everything. Um, yeah. But anyway, so those were two things that kind of like always kind of stuck in my craw about this film. Okay. Um, yes, uh, there is a. They are, I guess, college students. I'm assuming, right? Yeah, the college, okay, yeah. or maybe high school, college, something like that. And uh, it's like a film class, I do believe, and uh, to make some money. Uh, to raise some money for their class and to do some things, they are going to have a, um, yeah, like a retrospective at an old theater that's yes. going to be torn down. Yeah. And they come across a movie called The Possessor. <laughs> yeah. They do. And it's directed <laughs> by girlfriend. Lanyard Gates. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then they tell a story. Nice fella. Of, right. Then they yeah. tell a story about Lanyard Gates, who was kind of a cult leader almost away, made a creepy movie, and then showed it and killed people. Killed his family killed or something. His family. Yeah, yeah, while he was showing it. So just a kind of a spook show. And of course, we have 20 years later or whatever, and who who would be who is a target for revenge? And yeah. Who is right. this? And it all it's all coming back to haunt everything, right? That's kind of, sure. kind of the uh -huh. way, way it goes. Um what do you think? Now, you've seen this before, right? Yeah, Tim, it's been yeah. a long time since okay. I've seen popcorn. Um yeah, you know. <sighs> I think I kind of know why I never really went back to watch this film. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not bad. It's got it's funny because it has a lot of actors that were in, you know, uh, well, of course they've acted in other things, Ben, mm. but um <laughs> <laughs> yeah. had a lot of actors that acted before. Yeah, yeah. But um, you know, that were maybe offbeat characters in a lot of films yeah. that we grew up watching, yeah. you know, too or or from this time period. So it was it was cool because I'm like, wow, I forgot about these, some of these guys. And then, well, then some of them, you know, I still see yeah. and watching these films. Mm -hmm. So, um, that was kind of cool for me going into this because this was kind of like, you know, I could, I couldn't really remember a whole lot about it, but you know, I just, I don't think it's a bad, bad film. Um, I kind of like the premise. It's kind of like a Phantom of the Opera. Too, yes. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot like that. And I love the fact that, they take this old place and revamp it and make it into, you know, a really cool spot for, for movies, you know, and I've always wanted to do something like that in my own life. I think that would be like a, that's ah, my dream job. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or that or dressing up like Willy Wonka and selling candy. I don't know. I'm working. <laughs> I'm working on both of my dreams, but that would be kind of neat. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like owning a the theater. So, I like that part also about this film. Uh -huh. um, one of the other things I thought is kind of also a bright spot, though, too, in the movie is the films that they are showing at this, uh, uh, at the theater or the marathon or whatever. Those is are great. Is, they're awesome, man. Yeah, they're, and they're, they're shorts, you know, they're, mm -hmm. but they're really cool. And those were interesting for me. But I don't know, some, the rest of this film, I don't know, I guess it's just I have a problem with the, the main bad guy once he's okay until he becomes at the end where he is kind of like the phantom and he's you know i don't like the makeup a lot mm -hmm. and i think that for me it's not the acting because that guy's good and he's a goofball he's been in so many films too you know the, um but once he takes on his persona kind of there at the end i don't know i just uh, i have a hard time with it mm -hmm. for some reason and it kind of lessens the movie maybe for me well but oh, yeah i don't know timo I don't know. I think it's kind of a there's there's you, the fan of the opera. That's a good call. I didn't even yeah. I didn't even write. I, what I wrote down was kind of a cross between Hell Knight and the movie Matinee, where John yeah. Goodman kind of plays the uh, William Castle character, a little bit yeah. of the Ballyhoo, you know, yeah. you know, going on stuff like that. But then there's like hints of Scream sprinkled in with the comedy uh, sure. and a plate of Dark Man. 
because of the faces yeah. going back and forth. So there's a lot of things that were done around that time and after that too. Uh, yeah. The main guy you're talking about, Tom Villard. Yeah. You know, it was yeah, funny because I, I told Angie, I said, you know, I really used to like that guy. He was in a TV series called We Got It Made. Yep. That went yeah. on for a long time. And I said, it was a really good show. And I said, it also had Matt. He was Ma- a goofball. Yeah. <laughs> and it, yeah. yeah. And I said, it also had Matt McCoy in it. She's like, who's Matt yeah. McCoy? I said, he's the guy from Deep Star Six that Danny Hicks said had a chewy center. Yeah. I said, that's like, <laughs> or whatever. But he's okay. also in um, Abominable. He's the guy yeah. in Wheelchair yeah. Abominable. So I said, I really like that guy. And he kind of just, I don't see him anymore. Well, I know I don't see him anymore because unfortunately, Ben Harley. He died in 1994 at the age of 40 of AIDS. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah, and okay. apparently he had just found out, I think, before this movie and told the director because of, and the director, if he would have said anything to anyone, uh, Tom Villard probably would have gotten fired off the set for, yeah. being, for having AIDS, especially at that time. People were really scared of it. I'm just oh, yeah. overly afraid, like if someone breathes on you, you're going to get it or something like that. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I really like Tom Villard. And actually, to be honest with you, I think his performance is great. I mean, I think he's oh, it, it perfect is good. in it. You know, it is good, um, because but, it's yeah. not a it's not a mean spirited movie. It's got a lot of mean spirited elements to it, but his his ballyhoo, his over the top kind of keeps it. Uh, speaking of the old Batman movies, like the Jack Nicholson Joker, yeah, yeah. a little bit more like that, like a little like uh, macabre humor. You know, and stuff like that. Uh, I tell you what, though, that mosquito in that film plays a huge <laughs> like role in that movie. <laughs> in the whole movie, yeah. damn mosquito. Uh, I like that mosquito. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the cast is great. Tom Villard, yes, he does play the the. I guess the um, the, the villain guy. Uh, got uh, Tony Roberts mm-hmm. as a teacher. Who you, some people know from Amityville Three. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was in a lot of Woody Allen films. Uh, again, Bob Clark had a big big part in this so basically it was the porkies and and uh christmas story which is also the same crew that did black christmas now bob clark yeah. directed back by, uh, black christmas now he said he didn't want to do another horror film okay. which is why he didn't want to direct another horror film which is why he sat over the director's shoulder and did it from the back seat you know, basically. <laughs> yeah yeah um you also got your ray walston in it yeah yeah you role. know and I, I i wish he'd have been in it a little bit yeah me too like him yeah. yeah. Apparently the cast didn't like him. They said he was already crabby at that point in his life and he didn't want to be there. And, uh, oh, I bet. Yeah. yeah, so it wasn't, yeah. yeah. Um, D. Wallace, uh, unfortunately <sighs> playing a mom role in this. And she had like that short, darker hair. And here we are yeah. being, uh, and these me being a chauvinist pig. But I just, I mean, it was less, it was only like 10 years prior to that that she was knocking her socks off in those little shorts on the howling. Yeah, you know, right. I think D had a little bit more years in her to be a little sexier. Yeah, and she's a good she, actress, a great actress. Yeah. So yeah, you combine is. the two, and you've got the perfect set of circumstances that, if you're a producer, you want on the screen, right? Because right. she's not like sleazy, sexy. She's just like no mom or, or girl next door, sexy. You know, what I mean, and yeah. it's just really cool. And she's such a wonderful actress. Um, yeah, I think she was a little underused in this film. Yeah, of, I do too. You know, but I really love I love the whole fun atmosphere of the movie. It's a love letter to the old black and white films that I love. They even have a Japanese movie thrown in there, a dub yeah. movie in there, and I yeah. I just love the whole thing. It's not super scary. Doesn't take itself super serious. It's got an interesting little story. I think there's enough mystery to it. Um, like Jill Shalin. Yeah, uh, she, yeah. Uh, she's good in it. I like the whole cast. Like you said, it's a good cast of uh, people. The one guy in the wheelchair was in Christine. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of different things. So, but I'm gonna. You sound like you're not into it as much. I, this movie's a pretty big, great ape up for me. I really do like this. Okay, movie. and I think yeah. I think Synapse did a great job with it too. By the way, the Blu-ray. It mm-hmm. looks good. It looks mm-hmm. really good. Actually, it looks great. Um, you know, I can't poo-poo on the film by any means because it's got way too many good elements for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I just it's just kind of lukewarm for me. Um, I think my problem is, and I find this a lot in some of these eighty films. Uh, the soundtrack didn't bother me near as much. <laughs> it was all reggae, but yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But um, I, I just I think for me, a lot of these films, and I hate to be like this because maybe they were, maybe they weren't. But the fact that some of these characters are—they're trying to make this character, and I feel like a lot of them films from this time period 
are trying to make a Jason Voorhees or a Michael Myers or a Freddy Krueger or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I don't know. That's just, I, I think that's what, you know, I guess maybe the look of it and the way the ending was is what made me think of the Phantom of the Opera a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But then that's cool, too, if they were going for that. And, and like you said, this is a total nod to the old films. And for that reason alone, I have to give it at least a, a mild great ape up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I can't poo-poo on it by any means. It's got too many good things mm -hmm. about it. It's just not... Eh, I don't know. It's just not one of those that I, I really gravitated towards i guess right and um it, but it is good it is a good movie i want to see really those is, movies so. i want to see like a and i think other people have been asking about that i'm not sure if they exist anymore but i want to see the actual the actual movies they were playing in the movie theater because yeah. they produce those as little as like short movies okay. and i'd love to see them like completed if if they exist yeah. anywhere and i gotta think that don and jerry at, at synapse tried to <laughs> try to track try that to stuff. get those uh, down i would too. think yeah you know, or whatever, but uh, yeah, I think that'd be kind of cool. Because um, yeah, those are really neat. Too. Yeah, and I mean, it is a good movie. I just think that it, for me, it falls a little falls apart a little bit at the end because there is one scene in there where <laughs> the killer has a girl, the one girl, the ticket taker or whatever, mm -hmm. and and she's already dead, but they're up in the shadows and they're talking to her up in the wings, up in the top above the theater or whatever <laughs> right he's like puppeteering her <laughs> yeah oh <laughs> yeah. my god that's one of the best parts of that had a time. little bit awesome. of a tourist trap feel yeah and there's exactly. a little bit of that feel in this movie just i mean there's there a is. lot of feels mm -hmm. from a lot of different movies and it's i think i like it yeah. you know it's not really taking from one source it's taking from a lot of sources no, and then yeah. if you watch movies after this it was a little influential to some people oh i would um, think so yeah for sure it was a box office failure uh, yeah, um, which is kind of sad because it, it, I mean, look, especially when it was coming out in 91. That's the other thing, Harley. Yeah. It came out in 91. Now think about movies that were coming out in 91. We weren't really at the top of our game. Yeah. When it came That's to true. stuff like that, you know, and I think this one really kind of was, it, it was sticking its head above water a little bit sure. for me. Um, my opinion, but uh, I'm going to give us a solid great ape up, a good <laughs> solid great ape up. Um, I just think it's fun, it's good. I love the cast. Always love Tom Villard. Uh, I, I, I mean, D. Wallace, I, Bob Clark stuff. I just love, I love everything yeah. he's done. I love Porky's. We just talked about that last, last <laughs> week. Yes, I, yeah, I, I love I Christmas too. Story. Uh, Black Christmas uh -huh. is a great film. Um, the all around, just quality. Just, yeah. just, just, just quality stuff here. So I'm going to give it a solid great bait, but probably you've been early. Just uh, kind of a lukewarm okay. one, Tim. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's definitely guys to have some kind of great bait in it because it's, it's, it is a good movie. Mm. It's just, I, I don't know. For some reason, it doesn't pop for me, mm -hmm. but it has doesn't way too many good for you. <laughs> doesn't pop for you. Man, oh boy. <laughs> okay. Nice. I'll right. give that a great bait. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> Well, hey, we got, uh, let's see, a uh, good solid grape ape up and a mild one for popcorn yes. from you. Uh, but Synapse did do a really good job uh, with, yeah. the, with the disc. And the, I got the steel case, which is nice. Uh, let's see, Black Magic. We got two grape apes up for old Black Magic. That was a, <laughs> that was a fun, a fun chop sacky. Where are the chops? Movie. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, till next week, Ben Harley, stay spooky. And we'll talk to you then. Keep it creepy, people. You've been listening to the Timo and Harley Show, brought to you by ScreenPrintingFactory.com, your affordable one-stop solution to all your screen printing needs.